Hey everybody, it's Corey. Thanks for joining me. So we're going to take a look at the housing stats for the month of June. Got a lot of positive feedback from you guys last month when I did the housing stats for May. Remember I was in the trailer, we were camping and I was away from my studio and I wasn't able to uh, show you the stats visually. I had to talk through it. Um, in this one, we're going to actually go to the screenshot. Um, I do have my studio. I'm going to go in there and give you guys a visual look at the stats. Tell me what you guys think if you like seeing the stats as we go through them. And again, we're going to break out the new construction homes from the previously existing homes so you can guys, guys can kind of see what's going on in the market a little bit better than just a general uh, oversight. So again, we're gonna look at the housing stats for the month of June for all of North Idaho. Let's get into it. So June median sales price for all construction types Price was 545000 for the month of June. That was up 8.1% year over year. You can see that in 2022, this is when the Fed started cutting rates. Remember, they started in March. And then prices dropped about 10%. And they've gone back up 8.1% year over year. Let's look at previously owned. Your previously owned homes are up 10.2%, median price being 551,000. Look at new construction. Construction, new construction homes are sitting at a median price of 507,735. That's down 7%. And this is kind of rare, honestly. Um, new construction homes are typically more expensive pound for pound, you know, square foot per square foot. They're more expensive than a pre-existing home. What you're seeing here, the median sales price for new construction being at, you know, just under 508,000, I think, and again, this is just me speculating on what I know about the market, and I, I'm coming at this because I drive through these new neighborhoods all the time, these newly constructed neighborhoods, and I'm starting to see a trend of builders building cottages and smaller homes with smaller footprints. Uh, three bedroom, two bath. They're they're kind of trending away from the bigger lots and the bigger homes, for a couple reasons. One, it works better for their bottom dollar to put more homes on the actual acreage that they have. But secondly, I think people just can't afford these bigger, more expensive homes. So the builders are trying to trend more to where the buyers actually are and keep those prices closer to that five hundred thousand median price point. So. I think between the builders trying to trying to engage with the the actual affordability of most people, you're starting to see the prices come down. And I think it's significant to note that when a builder lists a home at a price, it's rare that they will come down in that price. Now, that doesn't mean they won't. And with good negotiations, you can get the builders to come down a little bit. What they would rather do is give you concessions than come down in price. And the reason for that is, is they don't want to upset people that have already bought those homes in previous phases. So, for example, if I buy in the first phase and by the fourth phase, they're lowering prices, that makes my value go down and I'm not happy. So builders don't like to do that. What they'll do is they'll kind of hide the fact that they're giving in to the buyers by giving concessions and those show up in escrow as buyer concessions rather than a lowered price. But what you're seeing here is an actual lower price, um, a lower asking price of 507735 And again, I think that's because the builders are trending more towards those smaller homes to a market where people can afford it better. Let's go to new listings. All right, so here we are at the June new listings year over year. You can see that new listings were at 827 homes hitting the market. Again, this is for both previously owned and new construction combined. You were down 5.57. So new homes coming onto the market as a whole, slowing. It's There's not a bunch of inventory flooding the market. Let's look at previously owned. Okay, here we are with the previously owned homes. You're seeing a downward trend of homes coming onto the market year over year. For June this year, there were only 687 new homes coming onto the market. That was down 9% over last year, which was already down 18.4% over 2022. So a very consistent downward trend of new homes 
of the previously owned type coming onto the market. Let's look at new construction. New construction, it's a different story. You can see here that new listings coming onto the market for newly built homes is actually up 16.7% year over year. Builders put 140 new homes on the market for buyers to um, buy. All right, let's go over to homes for sale. All right, June, homes for sale. You can see this is your inventory, that's what we call it. You had 2,024 total homes on the housing market for the month of June. That was up 10.8%. So remember in the last slide, we showed that the new construction is actually bringing inventory to the table with, with new listings, but the previously owned homes are not. Why do we have such a jump of 10.8% in homes for sale. And again, with little homes coming onto the market and inventory growing, that should tell you that there's a lot of homes that are just sitting on the market. And as I always say, those are your porcupine properties. But let's go ahead and break down what we have here. So homes for sale is up this year 10.8%. Let's look at previously owned homes. Previously owned homes on the market is up 15.2% over last year. There were 1,640 homes to choose from that were previously owned. New construction was actually down for homes for sale. Um, last year, builders had more inventory on the market than they did this June. This June, they had 384 homes to pick from. That was down 4.5%. We're gonna jump over to June pending sales. This is your buyer activity for the month of June. For all construction types, there was a total of 478 homes put under contract. That was up 3% year over year over last June. Let's separate it out. Your previously owned homes, pending sales, pretty flat over last year. There were just two more homes this year put under contract than the same period last year. But watch this. This is new construction. New construction, the rate was up 17.9%. There were 79 homes put under contract this year compared to last year. So again, you're seeing people gravitate towards the new builds. For one, the new builds, as we saw, are, are cheaper in the sense that they're building more economical homes, smaller homes on smaller lots, and there are people that want those. So pending sales for new construction is up. People want those new homes. Let's go over to closed sales. All right, looking at June closed sales, this is both construction types, both previously owned and new construction put together. We had a total of 397 closed sales. That was down 17.9%, sorry, 16.9% over last year. So sales are trending down year over year. But let's break it up and look at it even more. The biggest jump in downward trend was in the previously owned homes. The previously owned homes that were closed for contracts was down 26.8%. There were only 311 homes closed this June compared to last June, which had 425. You can see new homes closed 86 this year compared to 53 last year. That was a jump of 62.3%. So a lot of the buyer activity is with the new builds. Now, obviously, Pre-existing bills are still selling more in volume, but the rate of buyers is increasing greater towards the new builds. And again, I think it's because the builders are actually engineering their builds now more towards that price point that everybody can afford or more people can afford. Trying to build smaller homes on smaller lots, keep that price down closer to 500000 as opposed to a million. And through that effort on the builder's part, having inventory, they can get more close sales. There's just nobody that owns a home putting them on the market right now. And that's why you're seeing the previously owned close sales down and you're seeing the price of the um, previously owned homes continue to go up because as you have those prime previously built homes hit the market, there's competition for them. All right, so there you have it. Those are your stats for the month of June. What did we learn I'll tell you what I learned, and, and I don't like taking big swings at stats in small snapshots of time. I like to see larger snapshots in time to kind of see if there's trends. But one of the things that I'm starting to see is builders 
especially when you drive through these neighborhoods, you see it visually. Builders are building smaller homes. They're building cottages and, and, and smaller footprint homes like I talked about in the stats video. And I think with that trend, builders are a little worried about affordability. Um, they know that most people cannot afford the bigger homes on the bigger lots. So it'll be interesting to kind of watch what happens as we go forward. Are the builders gonna to continue to downscale what they produce in order to draw those buyers into the market? And then does that cause previously existing homes to go down in price? Um, we are seeing on the previously existing home side, again, that top third of the market is still very competitive, but the two thirds, the, the homes that don't have the super sexy stuff to offer, they're sitting on the market. And I think if we're looking at this summer and seeing how sales are still coming down, prices are still up in pre-existing, but coming down in, in the new builds, we might start to see a move towards the buyer going forward. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on these stats. And that's why we do these every, every month. And you're welcome to subscribe and keep up with us if you haven't already. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye now.